special opportunity to uh, to see one of the great pairs. Oh, by and half point. Half a point. Golly, so, what a uh, cutting tonight. So I trained her mother, showed her mother, was third in the futurity at her mother, won the derby, won 400 something thousand on her mother. And uh, so Eddie called me one day during the futurity when she was two and he says, hey Matt, he says, I think I've got a really good two year old here. I'd like you to just swing by and have a look at her and see what you think. In one cow, I'm like, man, this is the best two year old I've ever ridden. So I, I never will forget, I, I get in my car and I pull out and I head home and I call Tara and I'm like, I said, Tara, I said, I think I just rode the best two-year I've ever ridden. And I was like, what? I mean, that's a huge statement. How can you say that? And, uh, you know, he, he knew she was special then. They come down and we try our try in my outdoor arena the first day and cows aren't very good, and, but she, she's pretty good, but it's just not a great situation. And, and I'm, I'm already in love with her from the first time I rode her. And all I've been, I just tell Tara about her every day, you know, how awesome I think she is. And so it's kind of funny that evening we get done and we're at the house and I, I tell Tara, which if anybody knows Tara knows she's brutally honest about everything. And I said, what do you think about that mare? And uh, she said, well, I don't know if she can stop hard enough. And I'm like, really? And she said, yeah. I said, I just didn't really see it. Next day rolls around, we put some cows in there. And I cut my first cow and cow takes off and I kick her to go gather it up. And I mean, she drags her butt and just buries up like she still does today. And I turned around, I looked at her and I said, do you think she stops hard enough now? You know, <laughs> Barker's loved her as, you know, I think as much as, as I did. And, and we got her bought and started training her. I showed her in the maturity that, that year. And then she got hurt and that was a huge upset. That said, you know, look, she's good. Uh, show her through Paso, after Paso, let's look at it and, you know, and see what we need to do. So we do that, I win Paso on her and uh, we decide to do surgery. The injury healed well, but she, she wouldn't ever leave that leg alone and she protected it all the time. So she developed a lot of scar tissue in there. And she had a lot of time off. I showed her five times her five and six year old year. And then, and then we just kind of left her alone uh, for a while and, <clears throat> and she got better. And, and really kind of the, what led up to us hauling her this year was, was two things. Number one, you know, the vet says, look, this mare's healed. The best chance she has of ever getting completely back to normal, she needs to go to work. So we started back riding her and, and the goal was initially to get her over 400,000, get her in the Hall of Fame. I think when we started the year, we needed to win like 60,000 to do that. Got to the Super Stakes and they said, uh, somebody said something about Matt was hauling, that it was, you know, fun to see Matt hauling. And I said, we're not hauling. We're just trying to get baby in the Hall of Fame. And then we all kind of sat around and it was like, oh, well, I guess we have a shot. Maybe we should, maybe we should try. And they said, well, if you, you know, if you're game to try to win the world on her, let's do that. So, so we made the decision then, as long as, as we felt like she was enjoying it and, and, uh, and she was healthy and, and all that. And, you know, that, that we were gonna just go until, and see what happens. It seems to me like she, she wanted to be the world champion. It's like someone sat her down and told her, okay, Mike's already marked a 28, you know, Stingray, the horse that's right behind you in the world standings. If you wanna win the world, you better do better, you know? And, and, um, and then she came with the 34. To watch on video, she looks twice as good in El Rancho and Columbus as she did at San Antonio, you know, so it's kind of cool, like, just to watch her all year. She's just gotten stronger and better and better, and it's usually those horses, when you haul them, they tend to go the other way, and this mare just, she, she loves her job, and she loves me, and she loves Tara. You know, I've put this mare in some 
pretty good mind sometimes this year and she always bails me out you know she just has that much heart and that much try and and it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of fun you know showing one like that for a year well that's the thing like she gives a hundred percent every time that she goes in the show arena and so it forces you to get you know to give her a hundred percent too and and uh I mean, you like. I don't want to let her down. I don't want to let him down. He doesn't want to let her down. She's my favorite horse I've ever had. I love her. I mean, you can just her personality and and just everything about her. I, I think I love her honesty. Like she's so honest with everything. Like you know, you know what she's thinking, and she's just a people-loving horse. I mean, she wants she wants you to love her. So I think one of the reasons why she's so special to me, as will, you know, the three-year-old out of her is, you know, I, I trained her mother and, uh, and she was probably the first really good horse I had was her mother. And I mean, it's an emotional thing just because of, from, from, from the beginning, because of who she is. You have that history with these horses and, you know, it's just, it, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's kind of like you know, watching your grandkid, your kids and your grandkids excel in sports or something, only I, you know, here I get to be more involved in it. You know, I get to be a part of it, which- Oh, is a, great run. You know, it's awesome, it's a lot of fun. I mean, she could, she could keep going. You know, what We'll you see what do? happens you know, here. I don't know if that, I, mean, I don't think that that will go to first place, know, but it might. The this last year, she we'll see money shortly. A special opportunity uh, to, uh, to see know, one of the great the pairs. Oh, by and half point. Half a point. Golly, you know, so, what uh, a cutting tonight, huh? Absolutely, so Every mark, go to the lead and, with a 228 and a half. Yeah. I don't think she has anything left. You got to flip a if she wouldn't have gotten hurt and she would have, you know, finished her aged event career the way that she should have, she would have won the, the 60000 then and she, she wouldn't have done this this year. You know, the, the great thing about the Mercuria is it's, it's just like this. Without the Mercuria, this probably never happens. It was truly meant to be. I mean, I, I, I really think that.